millions of children in the United Kingdom are receiving very, very low doses of oral penicillins. There's a very sinister downside to this, of course, that if you're feeding antibiotics at very, very low doses to a person, then actually all you're doing is encouraging the spread of antibiotic resistance. As soon as you introduce a new antibiotic, the microorganisms you're trying to defeat and to kill by using these antibiotics will become resistant. They will fight back. Uh, in other words, the drug becomes useless. And this is an increasing worry because we're running out of antibiotics that we have available now to treat infections. The problem with underdosing children um, with penicillins is that for common infections, uh, the majority will get better but there will be a few cases of tonsillitis and otitis, ear infections and even chest infections where children won't get better and that will result in a more serious and significant complication but it also might result in more health contacts overall and a lot of disruption for the health system. So when we're prescribing penicillins we're using age bands which were devised back in the 1950s um, and they were based on the weights of children a long time ago. They've not been updated um, and yet in that period of time there's been a huge increase in the number of children who suffer from problems with overweight and obesity. So the age bands are actually uh, rapidly coming out of date and need urgently to be uh, reintroduced uh, and recalibrated. Children under one year of age actually weren't getting the recommended dose whatsoever. That should be 62.5 milligrams. In fact, most of them were receiving double that dose, 125 milligrams. Children in the next age band, from one to five year olds, about 95% of them were receiving the correct dose. However, children in the following age band, which is six to 12, only around half of these children were receiving what we would consider to be the correct dose, which is 250 milligrams per unit. The situation was even worse though in the higher age band, this is the 12 to 18 year olds and something like 70% of these children were receiving under the dose that they should have been. So why are GPs doing it? This could just be uh, learnt behaviour of GPs as they've been trained and they realise that throughout their training and their clinical practice that when they see a child they prescribe a certain dose and more often than not that child will get better. I think that there are a number of explanations for why GPs might be underdosing penicillins in children. The first could of course be that they're just simply not aware of the guidance. Another reason why GPs may be underdosing children is that they're actually preferring uh, to err on the side of caution and prescribe a safe dose to children. So there's now an urgent need to revisit these age band guidelines which are over 50 years old. And one particular solution, of course, is to move to weight bands or some kind of weight band calculation. This may be very difficult to implement because what it would mean is that every child going to see a GP would need to be weighed. And that has practical consequences in terms of time and who actually is going to do the weighing. It could be that we see weighing being done outside of the surgery, perhaps in pharmacies, for example. So I think there are a lot of potential solutions to this problem and um, as we've done here in Chartfield Surgery, uh, we've really reviewed the way that we're prescribing electronically. We have pharmacists who are actively engaged with making sure that we get the correct doses and I think that they could be much more involved in making sure that we're getting better medication prescribing for children. Mm -hmm.